Yeah. I made it. <laughs> okay. I've got that emotion out of the way. Actually, it was really difficult to prepare for this talk because how do you share one's story and share the limits one has faced with a crowd of strangers? But in many ways, you're not strangers because in, we're all differently unique in the own same way. And I'm here today to just show how I, I went from an American who was raised in the States, from a mother from Brazil, who worked as a janitor in hospitals, cleaning up operating rooms, and whose father was a Vietnam vet who flew helicopters and flew medevac. And then the television show that I watched as a child, MASH, which Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, shaped and inspired me to one day go and work in medicine. And so that's my background. I, I joined the military and I was trained as a surgical tech. And for four years, I worked active duty, served during the first Gulf War. And then after my military experience, I continued in medicine for a total of 12 years. And many different experiences, working with many different um, teams, people, and patients. And I was always impressed when I was working with cancer patients because they, they seemed to be the ones who showed the most strength and courage. And it was, I never thought that one day I would be a, pa a cancer patient myself. But along that journey, I fell in love with an Austrian, married, moved to Austria. And uh, I've been here a total of 11 years almost 12 years. And my time here, I got away from medicine and I started developing new skills. I went back to school. I studied international relations here at Webster. And then eventually I got into the uh, University of Salzburg where I was studying social informatics. And it was there at the University of Salzburg where I gained tools and methods to evaluate the world around me. And part of what I do in my research is I I examine how people get frustrated with technology. And I try to devise usable ways of dealing with this. Um, so in many ways, the past nine years or so, I've been doing a lot of ethnographic research, um, traveling a lot, engaged in what I call participatory observership. This is where you're a part of a system, observing it, but also detaching oneself and evaluating. So in many ways, I find myself a bridge between worlds, whether it's between Europe and the States, whether it's between North and South America, or Northern and Southern cultures. Um, I see myself also as a social technical, social technical amphibian, so I'm comfortable both in sociology and technology worlds. So in many ways, I'm bridging this. So in 2011, on my birthday, I went back to fly to visit my family. This was on December 13th. I was going back for the holidays. Now, a month before that, I noticed uh, a lump in my chest. But just like many men, men don't take their health so seriously, or you wait till a problem arises, then you take care of yourself. But I had already booked a flight, but I noticed something was wrong. Intuitively, I knew something was wrong. I flew. Um, upon arrival, I wasn't feeling well at all, and basically, practically went straight into the hospital, and for the next 10 days, I was uh, undergoing treatment and diagnostics, and I had discovered that I had a huge lymphoma, uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was pushing on my heart, and my left lung was basically collapsed. This is why when I flew, I noticed something was, wasn't wrong. Um, where I had sought treatment was actually a hospital in Baltimore where I had worked at previously. So going into treatment, having a prior experience in medicine, and then being a patient, you have a unique view on, on this. And actually, many of the people at this hospital were former colleagues of mine. So during the 10 days I was in the hospital and being diagnosed with cancer, of course, you're at the beginning of a long journey. And so, instinctively, I just began to talk with other patients and talk with uh, nurses and doctors that I was with, just to get into their minds and find out 
what drives them, what inspires them, and how can they work day to day with people who are facing extreme limits. And then during that time and during the next six months of my life, because I was going to chemotherapy every two weeks, so you, you, your life has changed. And I, I wasn't able to return to Austria to my two kids and family and friends. So I had to readjust my life to, to that limitation. So basically, I just turned it into one big ethnographic research project for me, uh, examining uh, where one can improve, and developing e-patient scenarios. Because essentially, my treatment was in three different countries. It started in the States, but then it continued in Austria. And currently, I'm living in Germany. And the treatment that I'm having there uh, is more follow-up. But each country, each culture has its own, own perspective. So during the last two years, I've been kind of redefining chemotherapy as sort of this distributed, co-present experience. I used a lot of social media during the times I was in treatment, especially quite often my kids would join me virtually through FaceTime or some video chat or Skype while I was going through chemotherapy. And there were also times during my treatment where I filmed procedures I was going through, and, and these films were used for nurses to help learn. So for me, my experience became more than just a cancer. Anyone can get cancer. Cancer is becoming a common thing. But I think it's the attitude in which you, you take to face those fears and challenge us to improve things. This is what I'm doing. I think humans are designed to push boundaries. Um, Bahá'u'lláh uh, has stated that we as humans have been created to endure difficulties. And I think this is something uh, um, that's really stuck with me. Because when you challenge your limits, this is a key component of innovation. Because in many ways, I think when you face your limits, these are sort of doors or pathways to innovation. Uh, another thing I learned during this experience is that the medical systems we have today are not really designed for global patients. Uh, in the States, I experienced this sort of commoditized medicine, uh, where the individual is very important. Here in Europe, Austria and Germany, medicine is more socialized, and it's seen more as a human right. Uh, for me, Medicine is social. Whether one complains or whether a system is socialized or commoditized, it's not the issue. In fact, I think the United States actually spends more money per capita than most countries. So that is socialized medicine. But in my journey, I discovered the limits of being a global patient. Also, I've come to this conclusion that cancer, for me, is an evolutionary process. I think cancer is a clear obstacle in which you have to adapt. It's not just physically, but the system around, around you and your family and friends adapt and adjust. This is what I mean when I say cancer for me was more a distributed experience. Um, other things that I've learned from the experience is uh, being in relationships and parenting over distances is quite a challenge. Um, experiences like this push your limits, and it helps you understand your capacities. In many ways, I feel I understand what it's like really to be human now going through this. Uh, I think it's also interesting to know that when I was treated in the States, they sort of treated me as a European. Uh, and then when I'm here in Europe, they treat me as an American. And when I'm in Germany, they treat me as an Austrian. So, so it's, that for me is a unique uh, experience to get outside of one's perceived role or character. Another um, interesting experience was uh, the socioeconomic issues I discovered. When I was diagnosed and doing my treatment, I had three different insurances, but not one of those insurances covered everything because either I was outside of my preferred network, or the, the insurance companies themselves didn't communicate. It's much easier to sign up for Facebook or Google and communicate with that to have medical systems to. So there's a sort of illusion there. Other parts of uh, this experience that I've learned is uh, I ask myself a lot of questions like, what is it like 
if I was a Muslim or a Buddhist, would I you know, treat this experience differently? Or how do, how do hipsters experience cancer? <laughs> uh, and then also realize that actually, if you look at pictures of kittens, it kind of increases your life expectancy. So, so I, I find that if you, we need to innovate past technological advances. I think one of the key things I learned is that we, we always tend to see technology as an answer to everything. But in many ways, our societies and cultures haven't advanced as fast as our technology has advanced. So that's the question. Is there, uh, does technology determine how we face our limits? Or do we, as individuals, determine that fate? Um, don't really have much more to share. I, guess. I think the fact that I'm here today is proof in itself that one can face their limits. And what I encourage every one of you, whatever challenges you face, dig deep down into your past experiences because that's where the strength and courage lies for you to face any limits you have. And remember, you're not alone. You're just one tweet away from being near to everyone. That's it. Thank you.